Kevin, thank you so much for agreeing to take part in our Great Mind series. If you can start off by telling us a bit about the Haymarket Group, uh, maybe your structure and some of the services you offer to your clients, please. Of course. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to be able to tell you about this brilliant business that I work for. Haymarket is uh, one of the largest privately held media companies based here in the UK, although we are a truly international business with over 20 offices worldwide, 2,000 employees in six different countries. We primarily focus on providing uh, specialist content to our audiences and clients in whatever format they so choose for us to serve it to them, whether that be in print, online or face to face. Kevin, what do you think are some of the key challenges facing the global publishing and media sector at the moment? And how do you envisage the sector responding to these challenges? Well, the single biggest challenge that we've all faced over recent years has been the uh, onward march of the internet Mm -hmm. and the integration of digital assets into our portfolios. So if you like, we would have historically been perceived as a traditional print publishing company and today we're on a journey to become the best specialist media and information company in our chosen markets. Our focus is relentlessly Mm -hmm. on our clients and audience so we adopt a audience first strategy Mm -hmm. which more often than not can be a digital first strategy Mm -hmm. but not exclusively Mm -hmm. digital. So we've worked hard to integrate into our business a wide range of new technologies Mm -hmm. and digital platforms to serve our content up to those audiences in whatever format they so choose to receive it on. So that digital disruption, Mm -hmm. if you like, for all media companies has been a big challenge. We've had to learn a huge uh, number of new skills. We've had Mm -hmm. to innovate and adapt Uh, to different ways of working and are still continuing to do so. And to to put that into context, the pace of change Mm -hmm. has been uh, extraordinarily fast. Uh, Only as recently as five, six years ago, still about 70% of our global turnover, our global turnover, Mm -hmm. will have been in print at the end of our uh, recent financial year, which was only uh, June Mm -hmm. of this year less than uh, 50%, in fact 47% of our total turnover is in print, which means in excess of 30% of our turnover is now digital. Wow. We've accelerated that pace at a a, a serious rate of knots. And the residual balance, by the way, is in what I would call our FACE business, and a nice little acronym that we ourselves have created uh, for FACE or face-to-face is festivals, awards, conferences and exhibitions, and they're the components that make up our live media business. From what you've just said, there sounds like a lot of organisational change has taken place. So that brings me on to the next question of innovation. What role does innovation play within your organisation? Creativity, Mm -hmm. for us as a media company, is our lifeblood, and for creativity, read innovation. Uh, because we have had to not just adapt to new ways of working, but we're constantly having to find new products and processes to be able to reach our audience and to be able to deliver the content that I talked about in whatever format they so wish. So technology and the disruption of technology, or if you like, the disintermediation of the way in which technology has enabled us to talk directly to Mm -hmm. our consumers means that we are constantly innovating and trying to find new ways, new products, new processes to be able to uh, uh, create value, Mm -hmm. not just for our clients and audiences, but for us as a media owner. This brings me on to the question of skills, and it sounds like this massive change and pace of change requires a whole new set of skills for the publishing sector. How do you envisage higher education institutions playing a part in delivering this? That's a great question and one that's very close to our heart because I'd I'd like you to indulge me a little bit on this because we've got a very proud and illustrious history of working in partnership uh, with education. So I'll talk about that in a second. But firstly, Mm -hmm. uh, there are a whole bunch of folks working in uh, in the business today Mm -hmm. who weren't working for us as recently as a couple of years ago. The complexion of the skill set that we and the people that we're having to employ with a mixed set of skills to be able to deliver uh, across this uh, rather varied and wide mm-hmm. range of platforms on which we're, we're serving content to our clients has dramatically changed. So we have got our own internal development capability mm-hmm. with um, coders, programmers, front-end engineers, UX mm-hmm. 
designers, uh, folks who are looking through our business intelligence and analytics department, at the way in which our customer journeys and consumer behaviours sure. are tracked and how uh, people both in the B2B and B2C mm -hmm. space um, interact with our content. So a wide range of different and mixed skills in the business today and we believe very passionately that um, education plays a critical role mm -hmm. in helping us create uh, people who are fit for work in the future with the right mixed set of skills to match our needs. So for example, we're working very closely mm -hmm. on an exciting project with the Richmond uh, Education and mm -hmm. Enterprise Campus, which is a combination of the local authority, mm -hmm. uh, a new uh, sixth form college, sure. a new secondary school, uh, and indeed our colleagues at Harlequin's Rugby Club, a new site in which we're going to be building a tech hub uh, in that tech hub, we will be uh, creating an environment not just for learners within the college and school to come and first-hand uh, understand better mm -hmm. the type of skills that we need to match our business needs, but also themselves to actually learn new skills, predominantly focused around digital development because we believe there's an acute shortage of people coming onto the marketplace through education with the right mixed set of skills. Uh, we're also going to be creating career pathways, mm -hmm. impacting on the uh, curriculum design of the sixth form college to sure. ensure that we've got 16 to 18 year olds coming mm -hmm. into uh, the workplace or who are looking to go on to higher education who are better equipped to be able to make choices around which particular journey or path they themselves want to go on. What are some of the key values that employees at Haymarket share and how do you think these values impact upon your clients? I describe us as a uh, uh, values driven commercially oriented organisation um, and our values today have been the same set of values that we've had for over 50 years. Mm -hmm. um, independence to my point about being privately owned but we're independent of mind, we're independent in the way we work and we're independent of spirit creativity. Mm -hmm. It's our lifeblood and that manifests itself mm -hmm. in the quality of products, uh, quality of content, their look, feel, design and the level of innovation that we have in the business. Expertise uh, it manifests itself predominantly through, again, the, mm -hmm. the, quanti the quality of content that we're producing. Uh, we are true experts in the markets in which we operate. We've got 70 plus brands, about 72 sure. brands in the business, uh, most of which have got market leading positions and in each of those markets we are true experts. We act with integrity mm -hmm. at all time. We're a dynamic, fast moving, mm -hmm. fast paced business. Okay. Over the last 10 years or so, technology and e-learning are some of the forces that are driving education. Do you believe that this is something that businesses can benefit from? Absolutely. I mean, technology as an enabler has opened up a world of opportunities for all of us. Great illustration uh, of the way in which we've used technology is uh, by exploiting the collaborative tools sure. that uh, are available on platforms today that weren't available as recently as a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So, for example, Google Apps is something that we've mm -hmm. adopted throughout the whole of the business and the ability to be able to actually on a daily basis share information, mm -hmm. content, content, expertise and advice across the business globally as a mm -hmm. byproduct of technology. In fact, we're so passionate about digital learning, we've invested in a digital training company, okay. uh, the Knowledge Engineers, which provides both a face-to-face -face, uh, training component, but also an e-learning sure. component. So um, we're big advocates of using technology as an enabler to enhance business practice work and as a collaborative tool. We teach leadership in many of our MBA and master's modules at the London School of Business and Finance. Yep. Kevin, what kind of leader are you? And do you think leadership is something that can be taught or is intrinsically uh, within human nature? And more importantly, what do you look for in people who work for you at, at the top level? In terms of uh, developing my own personal leadership skills mm -hmm. and brand of leadership, mm -hmm. I believe I'm on a constant improvement sure. curve constantly adapting to new ways of working and learning and finding 
better ways mm -hmm. of uh, delivering my message and communicating and leading the business in a direction that we have clearly collaboratively with my executive and leadership team mm -hmm. set. So actually, uh, I think there are aspects of leadership that become um, or sorry, that are uh, naturally uh, inherent in some mm -hmm. individuals, but equally, mm -hmm. equally, uh, there is plenty of opportunity to develop, learn, and uh, create that skill set. We've launched recently a leadership academy mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. within the uh, the business, and the leadership academy is designed to reflect those five core values sure. that I referenced earlier, and we have attributed each of those values to ways of working and the characteristics to remind you of being mm -hmm. dynamic, of being independent, mm -hmm. of being expert, of acting always mm -hmm. with integrity and of course being creative are uh, a core set of components that we look for in each of our leaders. Sure. What has been one of the most important business lessons you've learnt uh, whilst a student? I would say simply that the hard yards always pay off. Okay. Putting the energy and effort in to working hard ultimately will pay dividends. Okay. Uh, setting uh, an example, so you know, as a very young person, there were a number of key influential people who mm -hmm. helped form my own mindset, and I think that uh, my example, hopefully, uh, through my leadership style, mm -hmm. sets uh, a benchmark for others to follow. Great. And we do have a lot of students who want to enter the world of medium publishing. Can you give any pearls of wisdom on some of the key things they have to do if they, firstly, to be successful in entering, but more importantly, to remain within the sector and, and, and enjoy it, frankly? Yeah, well, firstly, it's a great sector to be sure. a part of. I still pinch myself on a Monday morning and okay. go home on a Friday evening, reminding myself of what a great business I work for and what a great industry mm -hmm. to be a part of. I think courage. Perseverance mm -hmm. and resilience would be what I would say to anybody watching this they mm -hmm. need to demonstrate. Fundamentally, uh, it's a creative world mm -hmm. to be a part of. It's an innovative world and it's a world which is constantly changing and embracing mm -hmm. new ways of working. Kevin, thank you so much for taking part in our series. On behalf of everyone at LSBF and the Global University Systems Group, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.